Hey, welcome back. So, in this shorter lesson, we're going to look at what I think is an important topic is how to hold your drawing utensils when you're actually drawing and making marks and looking at the figure or drawing abstractly or drawing perspective. How you hold your pencil, it, it really matters. And so we're going to look at different ways. We're going to look at the palm method of, of drawing, holding it into the palm of your hand a little bit and how to make what kind of marks you can make with that, the pros and the cons of that. And then we're also going to look at the writing method uh, of drawing and also sketching and when that comes into play and the pros and cons of that too as well. So stay tuned. I'll be right back and we'll get to it. Thanks. Okay, welcome back. So we're going to look at ways to hold the pencil. Now I know that's that's probably, you're probably thinking that's silly, but if you're a very much a beginner, you may not know about different ways to hold pencils or pens. And, and I'll say this, I'll preface everything by saying this, I'm not uh, an orthodox guy, meaning that I don't think there's one way of drawing or holding the pencil and nothing else. I think there are multiple ways to do that, to get the right mark that you're needing, you move your hand, you move your body, you change your hand how you need. And I, I think there's also um, unorthodox methodologies that you use to make a, a certain mark. Maybe you're older or frail. Think about Matisse. If you know Matisse's work, look this up. Think about his last, his final years where he was attaching charcoal sticks to, I believe it was either a wooden stick or a bamboo pole, and then drawing for the mosaic and murals that he did for the um, his, his final work. So that's another way of holding your pencil. Of course, those extended out from his wheelchair six, seven feet. Um, so that's another aspect to think about in this little lecture. So I would say this, don't poo-poo this lecture, meaning that don't take it lightly if you're in the very beginning, because I think there's, there's some good things for you to take out of this. Okay. Let's get going. I'll try to get through this fairly quickly. The first first method I want to show you, main drafting school, art school, you know, traditional Renaissance, Michelangelo, Leonardo, Raphael, uh, Rubens approach would be to hold the pencil in the palm method. Now I've got the pencil here. And so in order to do that, I just put the pencil down like this. And see how it's kind of at an angle, so I grab it. So it's kind of holding nice and comfortably right within the palm. And as I turn it over, I can use my pointer finger here to help guide me as I draw. So it sits comfortably, you can see that, and it sits comfortably down as I start to make marks. So I think the, the major advantage to this, one, is it, it brings in your arm movements a little bit more, uh, your, your, certainly your wrist a little bit more, but, but, but probably the most favorite characteristic of all this is that you can turn the pencil to the side to carry out a tone really quickly, a broader tone quite frankly. So, you know, my, my lead is not even that thick. I don't have, I don't like the extra long leads that other artists will shave theirs to. I have a, a little bit heavier touch and I'm a little bit more, I push down more on the, on the pointer finger. So that's probably why, but you'll find your comfort level. Okay. So I don't have that, that orthodox kind of approach. So if I threw a little bit of shadow tone on this little ball, this little spear, look how easy I can mop that in by turning my pencil to the side as I do that. Now I hold, I come back off the pencil a little bit with my index finger or my pointer finger, but I could push back on that and I could add a little coarse shadow in here. And so it really easily renders light, you know, pretty, pretty quickly and broadly. And this comes into play, quite frankly, really easy, uh, or really nicely on the, the figure too as well. But what I like about this approach too is that you can go from a very blunt or wide stroke, right, into a fine tipped stroke as well. So for carving out edges, so if I want to come over here and get this edge back 
take that edge on or put a line here for like a little imaginary table that the ball's sitting on. I have that as well. And so you can go from a thick stroke to a thin stroke easily or in one shot. Watch this. In to thin. Look how nice that is. And so you get some elegant mark making that uh, is very hard to get with other marks. I think the, the, the Intuos Wacom tablets are starting to, to catch on and pick up, so they're, they're close. And of course, you know, with the Intuos Wacom tablets, what I know about them, which I have some limited uh, uh, experience with them, and I'm getting, I'm getting more experience, is that they seem to be more stylus-oriented from what I can tell. So you're going to be holding it um, in our next method which will be uh, the, the, the pen holding method. So let me show you that. And, and no matter what medium you're using, uh, let me just say, let me preface that by saying is that you, you can switch back and forth. So that's the, the palm method, right? So I'm switching over, I get a broad stroke, and you know, you can get a broad mark with, I mean, how are you gonna write? I guess you could hold with the charcoal, I guess you could hold anything with the pen, but look how broad the palm, the palm methodology, and I get, that really thick stroke, right, with the charcoal like that. And so that's, that's pretty nice. And I can even go from a thicker mark to a thin mark in one, one kind of stroke and one kind of movement, which is pretty nice. So I think that's the pro. One of the pros of holding it in the palm method is the variety of marks you can get pretty, pretty quickly. I think that that's a, a, a superior kind of feel in a kind of a mark making approach. So that's the palm approach. Uh, the next approach is the pen or the writing uh, holding approach. And so instead of the palm approach, which I would start here, right? How are you going to really draw comfortably in this methodology with the pen? It's hard to get here. There's no way you can get any kind of broad strokes. I can't even make marks. And so this is the writing approach that you probably are most familiar with if you're just, you know, just beginning. So I'm holding it like I would a writing utensil. So if I was writing my name or if I was writing thank you, uh, you know, that's, just, that's pretty comfortable, right? That's just like writing. So drawing can be, you know, like like writing in that sense, the way you hold your pencil. So if I was doing another little sphere rendering, it's a little scratchier kind of feel. So ballpoint pen, uh, fountain pen, pit pen, they're all going to dictate a different kind of way of holding your pencil, the, the writing approach. So if I come over here with a ballpoint pen, same way, how do you get how do you turn this thing to the side? I'm scratching the paper, right? So you have to go to a writing approach. Nothing wrong with that. You, a certain mark you want, but this is a very different kind of mark than these here and these up here, correct? So palm methodology gets you some broad strokes and thin strokes too, but writing, the writing approach gets you a thinner, oh, scratch your mark if you want, but I think what's also important about the writing approach is that for finite detail, like super, super, super detail, I will move to a writing pen approach so I can, you know, noodle in there. If this is the, like an eyeball, I can get in there and get super finite detail. That I, that I won't get with a broad approach. So sometimes you'll sw see me switch back and forth from a palm approach. So if I take a tool like that can be used for both palm, right, and for writing approach, the Carbothella pencil. So I can turn it to the side and that gives you like 95% 90, of the control that I want. But then there's that 2% of you know, that finite detail and look how uh, linear I can get that movement or that detail that I want. And I can sharpen this up and, and give it, give it even, even more. So the writing approach, then the palm approach are the two major approaches to 
problems in drawing that you're going to find. But then there's one last one that I use every now and again, and I'll, I'll show it a little bit over here. And I, I guess it's I'll call it the conductor approach. I don't I don't really talk about it that often, and it, I guess I, I, it's still kind of in in with the palm approach because I hold it like that. But look how far out I'll hold it. So if you want to be a little, have a little bit less control and still be able to gesture around, you can have this kind of approach. This is kind of a little bit wilder approach. It's great for gesture, but you give up a little bit of control the farther up or away from the lead that you get. You get a little bit less control. You're still in control, but it's just not, you're, you're not going to get finite rendered detail here. Now, the other, the other methodology or part of this, the, what I'll call the conductor method, you know, conducting a, a, a symphony orchestra, if you will, da da da, is that you can turn your pencil, quite frankly, I'm, I'm letting it fall down on the paper, right? You can see that. Now I can just barely pick it up. You probably can't even tell, but I can get a very broad stroke that way. And so some artists like to work if they're working with a figure, they like to work with a con conductor approach. You'll see them do that to get to make marks or get the measuring angle. I think that's fine too as well. I don't do that as much. And you'll still you'll see that mainly in charcoal and graphite. They'll use that, but but really in, I guess any any material. So and the conductor approach is great for laying in tone. You're keeping your, your palm off the surface, your hand off the surface, so that you can lay down a tone. And I'm working in graph, this is graph right here, you know, pretty nicely and broadly. You can get it, you know, roughly fairly, fairly smooth. And you can work in, in circles. Uh, let me find a spot. Here we go. Let me work in in kind of like semi-circles or curly curly areas where it goes in a circle a little bit like so and you can twist your paper around 360 degrees keep that in mind as you're working uh, you can twist this paper around 360 let me do that uh, here just right into the camera and if you're if your body is more comfortable later on or the way you're moving your drawing you you can you can move your drawing instead of moving yourself or you can get up around your drafting area wherever you're at it that may not be as possible it is for my setup it might be a little harder but it is for my setup but for yours it might not be so you can move your setup around as to per your needs in addition to the way you control your pencil now i can draw over here quite easily. I just got to watch my hand and not smudge over through here. So that's the conductor method. So you've got the palm method, you've got the con the writing method, and you've got the, the conductor uh, methodology. And so lastly, I'll take a charcoal pencil here and I'll do some conductor, what I call the conductor method. So you can get a nice light line with charcoal, so soft. But again, I'm holding it a, a decent away from the lead. So again, the more you come up to the lead, like a writing style, the more control you have. So writing style is the most controlled. With the palm method, almost there, but with the palm method, I would think, in my, my philosophy, it's the most versatile because you can go from thick mark to thin mark in all in just about one stroke. So you get all kinds of... in in. Also with the palm method, I can keep my palm off the surface a little bit. So I'm, that's why we break pencils more often with this methodology because we there is a, an angle that you are getting off of when you when you work work with the, the pencil. So your palm doesn't touch. If I'm writing. You know, I have to be, in the writing approach, I have to be a little careful because your hand can touch to get control. Or at least your pinky, kind of like the sipping tea approach. British tea time, right? You can put your finger down to help you. Of course, you want something to mask that off like a piece of paper. So, lots of control for writing, lots of versatility for the palm method, and then the conductor method is a way to work really broadly and generally with 
a like a smaller smaller point, but that you can you can get in a lot of just general tone that way too as well. So those are the three major ways. There are some other unorthodox ways. Perhaps we can explore them at another time in an advanced section. But a great a great way to look at that is is Matisse number one. That's the way to make a mark. Or you could use I've seen fireworks in drawing using combustible you know marks so you don't even touch the fireworks you step back and let them off um, gunpowder and, and, and let them explode into drawing so that's you know it gets wild whacking crazy and that stuff's exciting too as well okay so there you go you have the palm method the writing method and then the palm conductor method okay I hope this helps and I'll see you soon out there with more lessons take care bye bye